Did you see where through WikiLeaks we found out that Clinton was paying people $1,500 plus an iPhone to go out and be violent at our rallies? It's a disgrace. But I'll tell you what, they found our people are very tough. They found that out. Donald Trump last night talking about the coordinated mistreatment of Trump supporters all across the country. Now, for the past few nights, we've been showing you parts of the conservative millennial town hall that we did last week in Vegas with Donald Trump Jr., Eric Trump, his wife, Lara. And tonight, you're going to meet two college students. They say they have faced discrimination on campus. Why? Their conservative beliefs. Watch this. Joining us now is Dominique Blair. She is an African-American Trump supporter, born and raised in Compton in L.A., yes. Los Angeles. And she is, you're facing a backlash in your community. We'll get to that in a second. And also joining us, Haley Nieves. She is a student at UCLA? Yes. That's awesome. And a Trump supporter. And you said anti-Trump protesters crashed an event that you were holding and they were stomping on the American flag? Yes, and not only that, but after our event, they attempted to burn the American flag outside. Wow. That's amazing. <laughs> you can't make this stuff up, Sean. You really can't. Yeah, you know, it's fun. as Don was talking about earlier, that's really sad. I mean, that especially where there should be a bastion of freedom of speech in a college campus and the free and open exchange of ideas, that's not happening. Tell us why you have decided to step out and say, all right, this is the person I want for president. Why? I have decided to support Donald Trump first and foremost because of the implications of the Supreme Court with the appointment of four Supreme Court justices. And this could fundamentally transform the orientation of our country towards the Constitution and the laws. Right. So this election does not only extend for the next four to eight years, but potentially the next 40 to 50. And that is something that we need to put in context and be cognizant of. Well, yeah. Good it every day. Not four or eight years. It's 30 or 40 years. Dominique, how are you? By the way, I love that cross. That is really oh, pretty. Thank you. Um, thank you so much for being here. Tell us what happened. What, what's, okay. what, how are you being treated? Oh, very poorly on my campus and on different campuses. Um, it's very hard to be a conservative, conservative activist um, in Los Angeles and going to different schools and even attending activist events with conservative speakers can be very harmful. Um, and dangerous. Um, you're faced with very um, crazy leftist mobs that are um, not tolerant of your views whatsoever. Um, and it turns into a lot of, um, I would say, very, a, a lot of bad debates, I would say, sometimes violent, sometimes hitting and fights, and I've been all around it. And, yeah. and just for saying you support Donald Trump and you want to, want to have a peaceful, reasonable exchange of ideas. And you were treated that horribly. What is important to you? Why, why do you like Donald Trump? Why is he your choice? Um, several reasons, but I would say um, I agree with him on foreign policy. Definitely, that's um, something strong that I you believe You mean you don't in. support giving Iranian mullahs $150 billion? Yeah. Mm. Yeah, I will say that. I don't. And you believe we should say the words radical Islam? And I believe we, sh we should say radical Islam. I definitely do. Um, and vet yeah. refugees that grow up in countries that teach Sharia? Exactly. You're oh. reading my mind. You're an extremist <laughs> like me. Yeah. 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 Apparently, we're all, we're all radical. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Dominique will be hosting the rest of the show. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, Good I'm, job. I, I, I really feel bad when I hear stories like yours, both of yours, because you're entitled to your belief system. And it's like we're under assault. How dare you think differently than another person or think for yourself or independently? Have you also had a positive experience where you can change other people's minds? Definitely so. Every single week, Bruin Republicans at UCLA and fellow Turning Point USA activists and I go out on Bruin Walk, the central pathway through campus, and engage with students face to face discussing this issue, these issues about limited government, fiscal responsibility, and traditional values. And I have converted Bernie supporters to our side and individuals from all points on the political spectrum to believe in our values. There's something really rewarding about that, right? I'm sorry? There's something rewarding when you can make intelligent arguments and somebody say, you know what, I think you're right. Yes. Isn't that great? Yes. You know, one of the things that has shocked me in the course of, this is my 30th year on the radio. Some of you weren't born yet. Um, it's my 21st year on the Fox News Channel. And thank you.
One of, one of the things that has really surprised me is Social Security will be bankrupt in 18 years. Medicare is headed for bankruptcy. Obamacare has spiraled down. No promise that they made. There's no Social Security lockbox. We have more debt accumulated in eight years than the previous, you know, 200 and whatever, 43 presidents combined. And I'm shocked that so many people, maybe in your generation or so I believe, they seem to have faith that the government is going to solve their problems. Where did you develop the sense that it's not the government's role to take care of your breakfast, lunch, dinner, health care, daycare, government car, government house, government cheese, government everything? <laughs> Where did you get the, the independent mindset that it's, we live at freedom and with freedom comes responsibility and opportunity? Okay, well, I would say it definitely came from my parents. Yeah. Um, my mom has raised seven children. I'm the last of seven. Um, and also my older siblings, too. They taught me how to be self-reliant, um, to get a job and be stable, go to school and take care of yourself. Um, we also take care of mama still, but, <laughs> but um, definitely take care of yourself and learn how to become an adult. Um, and just my, my uh, stepdad from Iran, he came here in Iran. Um, in the 70s and fled that country and um, he wanted a better life for himself and I saw him growing up um, started three businesses wow. um, one selling computers one driving super shuttle for LAX and another one as, as a professor at a college I bet so. you're proud of him right I am. yeah you know here's an amazing thing I doubt either one of you thought you'd be at a millennial town hall with hundreds of people sitting next to Don jr. and Eric did you no yeah great country <laughs> right years. Uh, <laughs> I'm glad to do it both amazing. This it's makes really, me believe there's some hope. Really there's hope. This, this is the hope that I get really to see. And there's hope in just a few days. Is everyone here going to be voting, I hope? Yeah. Thank you both. Very inspiring.